Welcome back to episode 4 of the Cucumber Calabash Mobile Automation Series. I've thought quite a bit about where I want the next part of the series to go and I think the correct path is to teach you how to use Bundler. Bundler is essentially a dependency manager for your gems. It ensures that all of the users are using the same exact version of each gem so that your environment is stable. So the first thing we need to do is install Bundler. So what we can do is just open up a command prompt and we can use gem install which is a Ruby command and you can specify what you want to install. So we're just going to type gem install bundler. Now if you get an error stating that it can't find the server, um, I will have a link below for a workaround for that. Okay, now that bundler has been installed, we can navigate to our framework. So go to wherever we set up our Eclipse framework and we can just open a command prompt in that location. So we are in our Calabash environment framework and we can just do bundle in it which will initialize a gem file for us. So if you look now we have a gem file. We can go ahead and open this and this is just a default one for you guys as a sample. We can just delete that. And we're going to put in this right here. So what it's saying, this is where it's going to be looking for the gems. And we're going to do the Calabash Cucumber gem and the Calabash Android. So the Calabash Cucumber gem is actually for iOS. So if you're not having anything to do with iOS, you do not need that. Um, the Android ones clearly for Android. Um, in a little while we will go ahead and put in the parallel Calabash gem but we will do that in a little bit because I want to show you guys something. So we've pasted in our dependencies and we can save that. Alright, now in our um, same spot in our Calabash environment we can do bundler or bundle install and this will install all of these gems along with all of the dependencies that these gems require or the ones they are built on. Okay, now that the bundle install has installed the, all of the dependencies and the gems we have required, we can go ahead and notice that it made a gem lock file. So if we open up this, you can see that here are all of the required so here's our Calabash Android and these are all of the required files for this and so forth now say that um, somebody makes a modification to the gem file which we are going to do so originally we just had these two and now we are going to add the parallel Calabash to this. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now when we run something to execute um, using Bundler, it's just bundle ac execute. And if we want to run that Calabash Android gem, we're going to get a warning saying that it couldn't find the parallel Calabash gem that we added which this is super important when you're working in projects that are larger than just yourself because whenever someone adds a new dependency it's not going to let you use any of your gems until you have installed all of the new dependencies so all we have to do now is just do bundle install again and this will go ahead and pull the rest of the dependencies Okay, and as you can see now, this time when we ran bundle install, instead of saying installing all of them, it just said using because we already have them, and then the few that we actually needed to install, like parallel and parallel calabash, it installed those. 
So now we can go ahead and try to run a gem. So we can do bundle execute Calabash Android. And as you can see, the command has properly worked and we can use this gem. Okay, so just to summarize what we learned in this video, we learned how to create a gem file using Bundler and how to install gems via Bundler. So keep in mind, if your repository already has a gem file, all you need to do is pull down that file and do bundle install. But if you're creating from scratch like we did in this video, you need to use the bundle init command to initialize that file. Thank you for watching this portion of the series. In the next video we will be looking at how to build and set up Calabash Android and how to generate a skeleton structure so that we can start looking at what the Calabash Cucumber framework looks like.